Hey kids, it's Jurassic James, and on this Jurassic James Explains, we're looking at Moros Intrepidus. So the genus is Moros, so it's important to know that the name, when people say a dinosaur species, and they'll say, oh, it's Tyrannosaurus, Stegosaurus, Triceratops, those aren't the species, those are actually the genus. So Moros is the, the uh, genus, and Intrepidus is a species. Moros, uh, Greek mythology, you know, the, uh, the personification of, of dread, and Intrepidus, of course, is in Latin for intrepid. So the idea is that this animal is a very scary name, right? So this is the first toy of one, the new species for my collection. I will tell you that when they found it uh, in Utah, they found leg bones, they found some back bones here, didn't find much of a skull. And the way it works in paleontology is uh, people always ask about, it's not just finding bones and looking at them. There are databases where you scan these bones, you scan their pr parameters. We know what some are, we know what some aren't. So comparing their bones to the database it turns out they're closest to Tyrannosaurus. Now, historically, if you find a skull, you know what you have, if you find most of the skeletons that you have, but now you can find fragments compared to other skeletons around the world and get an idea of what group it falls under. And it lines up most with Tyrannosaurus. Now, I'll tell you why and how in a minute, but in the meantime, let us do the official unboxing of this new figure. Now, if you're wondering why there's a toy for Jurassic World in the trailer, they show one of these guys, it's, a, it's way too small from what we estimate. Um, it was the one found, I think they thought it was like a juvenile, so it wasn't fully grown. So the idea is that it may have been the size of a human, like five foot tall, you know, almost about a human sight, height. So but in the movie, it shows when it's way smaller. So we're not sure if it's a baby yet or what, but we'll see, in, you know, June 10th. Uh, so if we shot this, we shot this before the movie. But the idea is we pick it up, it pops right out. Uh, so one thing to point out too with this animal is the legs are way too short from what it seems to be. The part they found were the leg bones, so the idea, not the incomplete foot, just the leg right here, and, and they realize that it's a taller animal. Um, as far as its design goes, we have the Jurassic World, here's DNA, and you put that away. Now the skull entirely made up, it, uh, you know, other than being a thoropod, we're not sure. Um, again, I'm not sure if the toy represents the animal in the movie, it's being a juvenile or what, but here it is. Now, one thing to point out too is that it shows it living with the same time as T-Rex. This is actually earlier. So within the Cretaceous period, there's late Cretaceous and early Cretaceous, uh, or we call it lower and upper. Within late Cretaceous, T-Rex was at the very top. And before that, for example, we have T-Rex at the very top. We have like Albertosaurus below that and, and a rock. So these, so the idea that there's one rock layer and one rock layer, and these guys are below that. So they're even older. Um, the importance of, the, of this guy too is, as a Tyrannosaur, we think of T-Rex as just the giant bone-crushing guys like Tyrannosaurus, Albertosaurus in America, and uh, Tarbosaurus in Asia. But we also have other Tyrannosaurus that are somewhat smaller. I did a video already on Allioramus, uh, Tyrannosaurus from Asia, uh, with Tarbosaurus, same environment. We have an early Cretaceous uh, uh, Utyrannus, which has some of the longest feathers of any large Tyrannosaur. There's D-Long. And, so, 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 and then we have Eel Tyrannus in England. So there's a lot of these guys who are Tyrannosaurus that aren't all the giant bone crushers. There's another breed of them, per se, that are very slender. So think of it how in like big cats we have like lions and tigers. We have like leopards. Well, in, in cat and in, in, in felids, feline group. We have Panthera, the big cats, and we have the fe Philidae, the, the, like the house cats and bobcats, those guys. Different branches of the same general thing. So uh, where it falls in beyond that is being debated. Uh, the fact that it's a Tyrannosaurid is really important, and that's why it's really cool. Uh, but again, this has like a they're giving it that, you know, this, that quote generic design for the, the medium-sized figures. Uh, this row of, I assume, feathers running along it, um, and I think in the thing it has an actual downing, but it gives it like, they have it has scales in the feathers right here, so that's all speculation. Um, but what's really important about this animal is not only who its family is, but where it was found. So, of course, we know paleontology in Utah and Texas and all that. I talk about Texas a lot, I'm from Texas. But Utah is one of the most prolific dinosaur places. I mean, if you want to find a dinosaur, go to Utah, right? And where it's found is this, like, right at, like, it's the early late Cretaceous, North America. So the animals that you would see in this time are uh, essentially in the same environment. This is an ankylosaurus called, these are not the scale, first of all. Uh, Gastonia, one of the coolest of the notosaurs. We have one called Sauropelta. Now, to be fair, Sauropelta, I did a video on it already. Here is an, the science model. Here's the Jurassic World model. Given the nature of the topic, we're going to go with this guy. Um, we also have uh, essentially animals that resemble, but may not be the exact 
species of genus as Acrocanthosaurus, Utahraptor, and Iguanodon. We also have in this environment uh, Tenothosaurus, which is an early Cretaceous, it's an Iguanodon cousin with a longer tail. Uh, Falcarius, which I think is my first time showing this on video. Falcarius is an, an ancestral member or an early member of the Th Therizinosaurus group, the group that includes those giant clawed animals. This is one of our earliest relatives found in Utah. Uh, we also have Denonicus, uh, the, the, our raptor, and I did a whole video on raptors already. Uh, then there is a large sauropod, which is Brachiosaurus. This is, again, Cretaceous period, called uh, Cedar Pelta after the Cedar Formation. Uh, there are no toys of it that I'm aware of, so I have a Brachiosaurus representing that group. And one animal that people don't even know exists is Sietz. This guy here is a um, essentially a, a, you know, the Allosaurian uh, carnosaur line, and it's one of the last of that group. So what we're seeing is that these large carnosaurs rule from Jurassic to early Cretaceous, and to mid Cretaceous, and by late Cretaceous they get they die out, and the Tyrannosaur lineage get bigger. So um, this guy is not the top predator in this environment. Uh, these 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 guys are, and it wasn't they kind of died out that the Tyrannosaurs then got bigger and became these guys. So that's something I want to point out how all this works because um, we're looking at trends and everything. We're seeing the different com groups compete with each other, and this guy is that kind of that pivotal point. Not saying that it evolved into these, but it's a representative of the Tyrannosaurus that is very, you know, narrow, scrawny, and small. And again, it has this place in the ecology where these are like lions. This is like your Japarina. And when they die, they get, well, not die. They, they are, they go extinct. These guys replace them. They're, that lineage replaces them. And that's one of the fun things of paleontology is seeing how these, these different trends go back and forth. So that's why this animal, although minute in size and minute, I mean, I would say it's the size of a, like a pony, uh, if you're, you know, or even, even punish them were, uh, I'd say a deer, you know, a, a large, a very large dog, somewhere between a, a, like a Great Dane dog and a deer, somewhere in that range, as far as kind of size goes, uh, or a buck particularly, not a female, a doe. But it's still a very important animal, so I want you to know to appreciate these animals on multiple le on levels, where, who it's related to, where it's found, how we determine what it is, and who it lives with. That being said, I'll see you guys later. YouTube, how you guys doing? Just to let you know, you can still subscribe, ring a bell, like, all the things, comment please, I, I, let me know if you like this kind of information, and we will go from there. And next week we'll see, we're going to do a pterosaur next week, something, something different, something, a flying reptile. Okay, see you guys then.